Hey, I'm at my kitchen table and I'm so excited that you're here because my hope is that I can share with you a little bit about my story. So I literally want you to picture that you are sitting across from me and we're just here to have a conversation because if you know me at all, you know that I love to meet women out for coffee or do phone calls or video calls and just get really raw and real um, and remove all the fluff and just get to know each other the highs, the lows, the beautiful, the ugly. And so I want to tell you a little bit about my story because the question I often get asked is, how did you get started as a coach? And why did you say yes to this opportunity? And what does it look like for you? And so maybe you're somebody who just wants to get to know me a little bit more, or maybe you're someone who's considered coaching, um, specifically partnered with Team Beachbody, but maybe you haven't found the right fit for a team or you're intimidated by the entire opportunity. So I, first of all, um, did not always honor God with my health journey. And so I need to take you back till about high school. Um, I did move here from Egypt in the year 2000. And so once we moved here, I was extremely um, inactive and gained so much weight. I was very obese. I'm very short. So I'm like 4'10". But back then, I think I was like, what, 4'9"? I like haven't grown since literally middle school. So I was very short and obese for my height for sure and very unhealthy. And so, like, my parents, like, all they could afford were fast food. Like, we were immigrants. We had no money. We lived in poverty most of our lives. And so they did their very best, but most of the time what we ate wasn't exactly the best. And so um, I never really cared about health, and it wasn't until really like entering college that I began to see how much my body was preventing me from doing things I wanted to do. And so I was a part of a ministry team over the summers with our Christian college that we got to travel and do different camps and see churches and lead worship and be camp counselors. And I remember that summer I was like the most active I ever was in my life, like so much running, so much madness. And I lost weight very naturally and effortlessly. And just the compliments that I got and how good I felt made me like kind of hooked. I was like, oh my gosh, what have I been doing? And I really do think my intentions initially were pure, but I became definitely more psycho throughout the process and really decide, decided that my image and the scale were going to determine my worth and my value and who I was. And so it was never enough. I began to work out over two hours a day. I was not eating enough intentionally. I was a my fitness pal queen and would not only log my meals for today, but would have it all planned out seven days in advance. It was consuming my life. I wanted to think I was controlling it, but it was a thousand percent controlling me. And and that went on for six years. It was six years of me refusing to surrender the pen for God to write my health chapter. He was writing my love chapter with my husband. He was writing my career chapter. But when it came to my health, I just refused to give him the pen. And so my selfish ambition and my pride led me down a valley that could have been much shorter had I just surrendered. And so I hit rock bottom. Not only did I almost hit anorexia, but I actually did get diagnosed with binge eating disorder and um, just lost control completely the other end of the spectrum and I ended up going to counseling in grad school and I finally decided that I was done trying to write my own story and God softened my heart and he met me in the deepest of pits that I was in where I felt like I was worthless and hopeless and um, and the world didn't even know you guys like I was a leader in so many areas and I just couldn't humble myself to admit I was weak and struggling and so when that started happening is when people started to help me and I received the help And then God very quickly started to teach me that I needed to start seeing myself through his eyes. And this wasn't an overnight journey. It took a long time. But fast forward. God opened the door for me to become a personal trainer very soon after this healing journey was sort of like midway through. And I didn't understand. I was like, this is the door that is a trap. Like it will devour me. It's an idol. Like why are you opening a door that is a temptation for me? And I just remember feeling his presence like, this is a door that can glorify me if you let me lead. If you take control, it will devour you. And I said, okay. You can make broken things beautiful. You've given me a passion for fitness because I was so passionate about it. And I'm so passionate about discipleship. I was mentoring women in their faith. So I was like, fine, okay, I will trust you. Do you and I'll follow your lead. And so I began teaching boot camp classes and fitness classes. I loved it. I loved it so much. And I remember living in Maine. My husband was in his first year of medical school and he approached me and he was like, I need a home-based workout program. 
And I was like, oh, I'm a personal trainer. Like, I work out at the gym. So I was like, maybe those don't work. And he was like, I don't have options. I need something quick and effective that I can do from home. I can't waste time going to the gym. And I need you to help me find a meal that isn't like cereal so I'm not starving every day because you don't know when you're going to eat in the hospital. So I did some research and I had heard about Beachbody. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know what this is, but... At that time, there was something called T25. It was one of Shanti's newest programs. It was only 25 minutes a day. And I was like, all right, like this sounds like it will do the trick. And I committed to it with my husband. I decided to be a supportive wife and do this with him just to see, like, are home workouts actually, like, do they work? Because I was really skeptical. And we went through. We did get Shakeology. So that's another thing that, like, was a huge deal because I also was all about protein powders and I didn't understand why it was such a big investment for Shakeology and I was like so understand I was a customer for two and a half years before I became a coach so every objection under the sun I went through it because I'm Egyptian and I'm super hard-headed and it takes a lot to convince me to do anything and so but there was a 30-day money-back guarantee legit this was the only reason we did it I was like we're gonna get our money back we're gonna get a great like great program great results and get our money back and um here I am over four years later and we never got our money back because we loved it. I love the program, I love the trainers, I love the options. Shakeology was a game changer. Not only did it help my husband with energy and keeping him full, but for me, it was like brainless. It was all these nutrients packed all together and it was brainless. I didn't have to think about one meal every day. It was ready for me to go. It helped me with my digestion, my regularity. And honestly, my respect for it was already present, but it wasn't until I was pregnant that I was like sold because my OB studied it and it became my prenatal. She was like, it's food. It's clean. This will feed your baby. You don't need to take a pill. What? What? So all these nutrients that our bodies are lacking every day. And I knew I wanted to become a coach after like finishing the program. And God said no for two and a half years. Holy moly. Like, what? So you tell me to go in this direction. And I love what I do as a trainer, but I'm limited. In ge- like, it's a geographical limit. And I can't really, really do life with these women. Like, they see me an hour a day, maybe, if I, I'm teaching like three to four times a week. But I can't, like, dig into spiritual stuff and their faith and their nutrition and their family life and their marriages. Like, I can't go deep. There were, it was limited. There were boundaries. And God just kept saying no. Like, beach body coaching to me was the answer. It was a dream job. It was being able to w- help women all over combine and being able to do it like God's way. Like, it's a platform because they don't care if you talk about Jesus. They just want you to help people with integrity. So, all right. Like, I just, I knew the vision, but God said no. And basically, to sum it up, he made me wait for Michelle Myers. Um, you know, I really could have signed up with so many other coaches and so many other teams. And I think I would have gone a very different direction because we look like our leader. We're influenced by who we follow. And so I'm not dashing any of those other coaches, but they certainly were not Christ centered businesses. And I know I would have conformed to their patterns. And so when I met Michelle Myers, I was talking her for a year on Facebook. Maybe you're doing that with me. And I just loved her heart for the Lord. And I loved her devotion to her family. And I loved her passion for fitness with faith. And I was just like, "Mm, this is like, this is what I want to do. And um, I remember she posted one day about Team Iron looking for women. And I don't even know what Team Iron was. I had no idea she was a Beachbody coach at all. I thought it was for her, like, clothing line or I don't know. So I looked at the application and I saw the word speech body and I was just like, X, like after two and a half years of no's, you're just like, no, beach body flag, red flag, no. Um, it was my husband. I came home and I told him about it. And he'd heard me talk about Michelle many times in that year about devotionals and things like that. And Graham's not a man of many words, like he's not confrontational much. And so, but he just looked at me and he said, You need to talk to Michelle. And I was like, Okay, I will talk to Michelle. And so I did the application got on the phone with her. It was like my lunch break at my mental health job. Oh, I'm a, I'm a licensed social worker. <laughs> I didn't mention that. Um, so I worked in mental health for six years. I was I went from case, case manager to therapist and then supervisor. And I loved what I did so much. I still am a licensed therapist. I do part like part time online therapy. Um, but it was extremely like exhausting and mentally draining. And I did not it did not make me better as a wife and I just knew that that was not my future I wanted to do it just in a different way so anyway that's a fun fact um so I was at work and I was on my lunch break and I'm talking to Michelle and I'm like weeping because I've never seen a green light so clear in my life where God was like she's the leader I want you under because 
you're influenced by who you follow, and if you want to do this my way, you have to follow someone else doing it my way, Karen. Man, you got to be patient with God because he knows better. He knows best. He knows best. And and I almost went rogue so many times in those two and a half years. I almost pressing that sign up button so many times just because I just, he was too slow for me. <laughs> and I'm so thankful for other people counseling me and guiding me. My dad, even my husband, just being like, wait for the Lord. Best decision I ever made. And um, I never knew the potential of the business going in. I just, like, I genuinely just wanted to help more people. Like, people say you never go into a network marketing company because you don't want to make money. Like, I genuinely had no idea what the financial stuff was or the compensation. I literally was just like, this is an extension of my gifts and my passion. Like, it's a no-brainer. Let's do it. And you get a discount. Like, I wasn't doing it for the discount, but that was nice. Like, 25% off everything? Sure. And, um... I just remember that very first month, I didn't know what I was doing, but I ran my first group. I wanted to run a grace camp and I wanted to help, like you basically as a coach, you run the race, like you're running, you're struggling, but you're running. And if you see a sister who needs that support, you just invite her to run with you. Like, Hey, I'm already running. Like, do you want to do hard things with me? <laughs> Cause I mean, I could use some support myself. I knew that's what a coach meant. I'm not selling product. I'm sharing with people what I'm doing, and if they'd like to join me, I'd love to have them. And I am selling the message that God does not call us to complacency in our health, and that fitness and health are not compartmentalized, they go together. And so I knew that going in. I knew that I was super like confident about the products and the programs, or else I wouldn't have bought them for two and a half years. And I knew they were going to bring results, but I didn't care about the external results if the internal wasn't changing. And so I'm just running. And I ran my first group. The first month I signed up, I signed up July of 2015. I ran my first group July of 2015. And I'm, I, that's how I do things. Like I learn as I go. Cause I really believe that God can't steer a parked car. So I was like, you know, I'm going to do the trainings as I go. And I'm just going to like figure this out. <laughs> and so I'm running. And I remember that very first month I reached out to women and my friends and family. And I was just like, I know this tends to put a bad taste in people's mouth, but I hope you know my heart. And I'm just like so excited to teach and to extend the knowledge that I've gained in my mess and how God redeemed my mess and made it my message. And I'd love to help you if you want to get healthy from the inside out. And I'll never forget the power of that first group. Lives were being changed Women were breaking bondages. Freedom was being found. I was loving it. It was like an escape from the mental health world. And um, I was shocked. Like when the paycheck did come, let me just tell you, because money does not ever lead for me, but money is important because you really don't join things for no reason. Like you want to provide for your family. We have $300,000 of debt because of medical school. Like it wasn't in my mind going in, but I just remember being like, what? What is this? What is this? Because all I did was help people. Like they bought the tools and I just helped them use the tools and gave them a space where they can thrive and post for accountability and I could do some teaching and we could do things together. It almost feels wrong being paid for this. <laughs> and, um, and I knew in that moment that like this was a really special opportunity. Not only for me, but the women's lives I was touching and for my family. An honest business transaction is when both parties are better off when you're done. And so I didn't have a problem like telling people that an investment is required because until you make an investment, you don't invest at all. Like not mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And so I knew that this was going to be a game changer. And so I dove in and I was terrified of building a team. I knew that building a team was a thing, but I didn't touch that for a long time because I didn't feel qualified to have a team. And God humbled me with that. And he was just like, this dream that I've called you to, this vision, this mission, it doesn't take one person. You need a team for this dream. So stop being selfish and keeping this opportunity to yourself and start inviting people. Recruit, like look for women who could be on this team, team race to serve. We don't race for rank, for paycheck, for the flashy things. We race to serve people with humility and integrity, going the extra mile in love and grace while serving in health. That's our team mission. And um, our team began growing. 
with like women who are truly my best friends today, that we get to run groups together, brainstorm with each other, pray with each other. I used to be always afraid of creating big goals. And then I remembered that when your big goals are grounded in people and helping others and doing things with God, you can't get lost. So I have to keep that in my mind all the time. So I'm two and a half years in, depending on when you watch this video, and our team is continuing to grow and I'm not we're not done. Like we're still looking for more women. This this opportunity is never gonna be um not an opportunity. Like if you have a heart for people, if you want accountability for your own health journey, if you really want to make a difference, why are you not talking to me? Because it's not that I'm amazing. It's not that, you know, this is an overnight, like, income change. Please understand. Like, it is not. Let me just tell you that there's no level of guarantee in this business financially because it's all about what you put in. Um, I know it's possible because I'm in that, but it didn't happen by me just sitting here being like, Lord, bless me. Like, it came with God saying, be faithful in your business hours and trust me with the outcome. So... If you're someone who's ever considered coaching, but you're looking for a team and a tribe that fits you, I don't know if we're it, by the way, and I would totally respect if we're not. And please know, I get this question a lot. What if I'm not a Christian? And I need to address that because you don't need to be a Christian to be on Team Race to Serve. Faith is a big part of who I am, so I just need you to understand that my teaching, my training, how I see this business is faith-driven because that's what keeps us... In, like with integrity and humility and doing things with the right heart. However, we do have people on our team who aren't necessarily on the same faith journey as us, but they're still women who are beautiful leaders and they care about people and it's not about the wrong things for them. And so um, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for a woman who's ready to love people well, work with consistency and diligence, not dabble, but really dive in. And if you're listening and you want to be just a discount coach, talk to me about that too. But I'm serious. Like I'm also looking for women who are ready to make an impact because if God calls you to something, you can't just fluff it. You can't just like half show up. It's now a gift. I see this business as a gift and a blessing. And so I've got to be a good steward of it. So that's how I kind of began. And it's just incredible to me till this day that God used a part of my life that was so enslaving, that was so much bondage, that was so tangled up. He helped me untangle it, made it my career, and then commissioned me to go out and untangle my sisters. That's Jesus. This, that's Jesus. That's not Karen. This is now just me trying to honor what he's done in my life. And it's a way of me saying thank you by going out and helping others do the same. That's what being a coach is. So I know I didn't go super deep into like, what is Team Beachbody? And what does a day look like as a coach? And what is the compensation plan? And, you know, all this stuff. Because that's nitty gritty. Like that's like that's you and I talking one-on-one -on -one and me presenting the business full out to you, which I will do. I don't fluff anything. I will tell you the ins and outs of the business, how it works, the structure. But I'm telling you how I became a coach and the heart behind my coaching journey because it continues to be my why to this day. The why that helps me show up when I don't feel like it, it's greater than me. So thanks if you've stuck with me this long, thanks for letting me share my story with you. I pray that we can connect if this is truly something that tugs on your heart. I can't wait to hear from you.